This live presentation was produced in Ashland, Oregon by the Rogue Valley Metaphysical Library and Event Center. RVML relies on the support of our volunteers, members, and donors to organize and present these programs. For more information about this presentation or to borrow, download, or purchase other recordings from our catalog, please visit our website at rvml.org. I'm an old, old fart, so I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, tonight's lecture or, or talk, whoops, there's psychic services. We uh, developed a technology with Navy Intelligence. I work SEAL Corporation. We'll talk about that in a little bit. For two and a half years, I'll show you our 10th quarterly report so you can get an idea of the kinds of things we were doing, including chips and plants, so that I could talk to the guys directly if they were working for me. You know, have later we went into some other things, but we did a bunch of stuff uh, with biophysics. And um, okay, the t talk tonight is going to be about how extrasensory perception works in your mind's eye. Once you've got it, you can improve your ability and guessing. Anybody in this room, uh, part of the papers I'm going to show you, we did uh, studies with. I had over 60 study people, people who are testing people, and we did several hundred thousand people, and we developed some technologies on how extrasensory perception works. It started with an interview with Milan Riesel. When I worked with Navy, he came from Yugoslavia, sat in my living room, and we talked about the Russian work on it before I started doing SEAL Corporation, before we were Navy SEALs. I was their physicist. Um, we made some amazing discoveries, which is now dogmented into a brand new book that I've co-authored with Nick Begich called The Brain Spa Power Tools for the 21st Century. Actually, it's Technologies for the Evolution of Consciousness. His latest book out on mind control is on technologies for political control. And now we're going to teach you or offer you some technologies that you could use to evolve your own consciousness and to hell with what's going on out there. You know, my friends in Canada are really worried about what the United States is going to do in terms of civil wars when they finally realize how duped you are in terms of what the new world order really means to you on a personal level. Bush is not our president, for example. Who would be the president? We follow the money, and that would be the guy that makes all the gunpowder and plastic, right? That's DuPont. And so there's another kind of a structure out there. DuPont was the one that groomed me for Navy intelligence, by the way. So I worked for Instrument Products Division. I worked the research laboratories and so on. OK, so my talk is about, it's all in your mind, the scientific study of extrasensory perception. Now, we're going to first start with altered states of consciousness. And mostly, uh, we have a whole series of different brainwave states that we've measured in what we call the occipital region of the brain. This was where our first attempts to try to understand where dream telepathy and uh, uh, nightmares, things of that nature, interfaced with ESP. And to do that, we needed some basic definitions. This is in the early years now, before remote viewing. And so, um, what we're going to have to do is understand what a metaphor is, because we speak always in metaphors. The way we group information, it's, oh, yeah, that's Gregory Bateson, all right, right in his very finest level. What is your metaphor but to feed your paradox? Gregory Bateson is, uh, uh, well, Paul Gregory is a good friend of mine that lives in the village that studied with Paul and, uh, I mean, with uh, Gregory Bateson. And, uh, He's like an old guitar friend of mine. Anyway, uh, they do sponsor the Omni, Omni's uh, Poetry Science Talks, which is where I started this program about three years ago. When I left the military, I became a dirt farmer for the last 35 years. I've been writing for Acres USA, and I'm considered like the best field man for herbs and spices. That's what I do. But I have recently become very disenchanted with the herb trade. I'm not happy at all. Nobody's out there interested in curing you anymore. It's not even about that. And so it's business as usual. And so I decided to go back into my writing. Nexus immediately picked up works from my ex-wife, Iona is here. Iona is your contact for the Grants Pass Metaphysical Library. We do have an open house there. And I'm going to bring some gizmos and some other things there tonight. Yes? OK. Um, I brought, the last time I was here to speak, 
87 of you within the next week and a half came out to visit me in Grants Pass to get a hold of my mushrooms. I have, uh, we've made some breakthroughs in cancer research. We now know that AIDS is not a, a, a retrovirus. What it is, it's a mycobacterial that doesn't filter. We can cure it. And we've got clinical studies already ongoing. I have a $10 million purchase order with the United Nations to do Swaziland now. We've already done Ghana. And uh, so we're doing studies with AIDS uh, in this area, hepatitis C, I had one guy from Talent uh, that was on dialysis at Medford Clinic, and within six weeks he's off dialysis. Uh, all six of the people who were on interferon with hepatitis C are off. We can explain that because later in the talk, I'm going to suggest to you that cold fusion processes occur in the body at atrazine triphosphate. ATP, you can eat it as a food. And so these are going to be the kinds of tools you can use with brain drivers and other things to live to 150 years old and maybe have some quality of life while you're doing it. Uh, awareness, that's what it's really all about. Okay, so if we understand the concept of metaphor, that everything I say has several levels of indication, then we're gonna go into the difference between inside the body and outside the body. Originally, extrasensory perception was developed into two separate categories of PK or uh, you know, psychokinetic phenomena and extrasensory perception. And extrasensory perception had to do with internal, where PK phenomena, you know, with apportation, teleportation, levitation, were dealing with outside the body. Later, I'm going to draw an inference to show you how remote viewing, which is a newer addition, is an outside of the body phenomena dealing with PK phenomena. You have to be very careful with it because it starts to change your body when you do it in terms of which parts of the brain you're working with. That's what my last talk was about is brain drivers. Extrasensory perception inside the body is broken into five basic categories. You're either in telepath, which means you're transmitting information, clairvoyance, which means you're receiving information, Precognition, which means it's transcending time in the way you exchange that information. Astral projection is where you take and you go to that location and get the information and bring it back to yourself. And radiesthesia is when you use an external device to communicate to your consciousness, whether it be tarot cards, I Ching, runes, bones, whatever way you do it. You know, it's an external foil that you use as a way of talking or forming dialogue with yourself. As we're going to find out later in my equations, um, your brain is actually can be seen as a four-dimensional hologram of five space, which means that any possible movie you could conceive of is not only happening right now, it's true, and really the only reason you're experiencing horror on Elm Street right now is because of the way you were birthed. Do you understand? Oh, some doctor was going to try to chop my penis off. They call it circumcision. The rudeness and the way a child is created, you know, at the moment of birth and how it's tr treated sets up belief systems and your rules of conduct, the way you're going to behave and how you, you know, how you believe things and your values. Imagine some little kid, oh, he won't remember this when they circumcised me and how that deals with this part of my body. These things were discussed with... Um, Steve Gaskins, Monday night class, before he formed the farm, and he went to Tennessee and they did spiritual women rivalry and the concepts of birthing differently in the way our culture does it. Look at a dog and how loving a dog is and devoted in comparison to us and look at the way they're born. Simple stuff, you know, it's basics. Anyway, these are inside the body, and they're the way we organize information based on the three grand illusions. This is based from Lawrence LaShawn's original work, which talked about time, space, and ego being the three basic illusions of reality. They're not reality at all. In fact, the reason you have experienced things like time is because of Robert Ornstein's talks about time is a duration of consciousness. It's the way you group information around an event and the way you remember it and how it's stored in your brain. And because your brain is convoluted and there's a bottleneck, there's a duration point in terms of how it sets up its engram in the brain. And that, because you have two brains, you have duration. Because you have duration, you have the concept of time. 
time isn't real. And as we get further into our studies with extrasensory perception, we'll see that. This was based from his medium, The Mystic and the Physicist by Lawrence Lashon, one of my teachers. Now, there is a theorem in information theory that says, basically, this is a fractal. This is where we're going with this, that if you have enough information to ask a coherent question, you have enough information to answer it, which means you already have the answer. You just don't have the mechanisms yet to have dialogue, OK, with the other parts of your brain, which is what you're seeking, union with self. So there's a way of setting up dialogues. These are what we call the power tools from doing Tai Chi, breathing exercises where you concentrate on breathing. You have another one on diet. You have another one on emotions. OK, right now, I am just started a course with Centerpoint. This is my second time through it on changing value systems using brain drivers. You can go in. What were the brain spa that Nick and I are putting together is going to be a thing about changing your filter and beliefs. They're not working for you. Why would you believe it? Go in with your rotor rotary and clean you out and change your beliefs. Searching. In my unit of physics, the two key words were reproducibility and reproducibility, repeatability and reproducibility. And you can, you know, these were the two foundations for Scientific American. The problem is Descartes separated the mind from the body. And we now have physics that's now indicating how the observer changes the observable. There's some kind of an exchange going on there. That's about my non-local mind and the holographic universe. No longer about quantum mechanics, it's about dimensional physics. And when they fired up CERNs this last month and they created the first mini black hole in history, did you guys hear about that? Because it happened in, in Switzerland. They proved the absolute existence of dimensional physics. OK, that takes care of quantum mechanics is out now. It's no longer useful. We knew that in the 30s, and they would teach it to us in physics, but None of the data we have fits the equations. You know, that's why when I was at Washington State University, uh, we had a little known chairman of physics from England called Raymond Band, Dr. Band. He did a thing called Band Theory, and he talked about event horizons, precursor waves, and negative mass. That's what I had to suffer when I was in under, undergraduate school, is this weird math on this stuff. So about the time I entered the physics, of extrasensory perception, Edgar Mitchell, part of our colleagueship under Dr. Uh, Stanley Krippner, who was my mentor also, had us all in New York in 1972 doing a big conference. And then I started Navy Intel work. And Mitchell was doing Apollo 14 mission studies where, and this is on, this is on mission control tapes. Mitchell first says, there's something outside the capsule. And it turned out what it was was a bushman from Aborigine uh, 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 Australia that went up in the flame to see what was going on. <laughs> How does that work? That's on Mission Control's documents, by the way. Now, what happened was we did some experiments. James Hurtak and Edgar Mitchell did some basic experiments in the Apollo Fish Mission Studies because we were in a position to do some things in space that were not possible on Earth. The first was we could have the space capsule on the other side of the moon and do our studies on the other side of the Earth. So we had a massive amount of mass between us to see if there was any attenuation. We had distances in space so we could measure how quickly phenomena could occur. And a whole series of very unusual things came out of the psionic, psionic research that we were doing. Mitchell was the first. This says the 10th quarterly report for SEAL Corporation that I did. This is what we call a PERT chart. We had indexing and subjects with phase one, phase three, phase four on biomonitors, hypnosis, transducers, pyramids, organ boxes, devices, production. We had a whole series of projects going on in different parts of, of, the, of the western part of the United States. I ran, when I was SEAL Corporation, I did all the SEAL Corp before we were Navy SEALs, and I did so well with the ESP studies, this stuff here, that they then moved for the next six and a half years. I was Mankind Research Unlimited's 
Northwest Regional Director. I'm a local homeboy here now. This is where I've retired. And I've been here 22 years um, farming herbs. <laughs> Like everybody else here. <laughs> Welcome to Kneecap, Oregon. But uh, that's what I call it when I'm in Amsterdam. Nobody knows where we are. I mean, you know, nobody has a clue where Grants Pass or Ashland. Is that near California? They don't even know where California is on a map usually. So, you know, when you talk about where you're from, they don't have a clue. Oh, well, yeah, I'm up in the Redwoods, up near Venus. Anyway, we did testing of control subjects with biomonitors interfacing different modules, shakedown procedures, parameters of trance states. We were doing some serious work here. And we had maybe at any given time, I had a payroll probably of around 60 to 120 people. We had religious churches like Sam Syke that were working for me. They believed in ESP. Remember, this is the era of Jack Schwartz. I did tested at Jack Schwartz for pain out at the Manager Foundation, set up the biofeedback. But there was other people. There's Keith Milton Reinhardt of the Aquarian Foundation. He was doing apportations and pulling things out. And ladies are blowing their minds on him, you know, and he's doing his things. He was gay. But we had to test him because he was exhibiting paranormal phenomena, like literally. And I have documentation of this. Helmut Schmidt would, it was at uh, the BSRL, created a random generator to see if we could, you know, trip him that way, you know. He was doing something. He had, I had a class, I was teaching parapsychology at the University of Washington, and I had a class and there was like 102 people it, that attended that one class that Reinhardt came in, and he gave a billet reading to every single person in the class. And he only missed two out of the 102. And my question, which I wrote down, is prove to me you're not reading my mind. And his comment to me was, in a, in a, in a, in a chest I don't even know about in my mom's house, I will find a letter five down, blah, down, down, and in that letter, he will be demonstration that he's not reading my mind, because the letter will say blah, 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 blah. Now that's what happened to me. That was Keith Milton Reinhardt. Yeah, you got anybody like that here in this area? Well, there were some giants that were walked around last, in that last century, and I'll tell you, uh, the last 20 years, I mean, and there were some serious stuff, and we, were, we weren't believers, but we knew something was going on, but how do you isolate the variables? So you can test the thing and actually have a, something that you can leave with, you know, that you can use. Well, that's what I did with the ESP. This is SEAL Corporation. This is like history. And during that period, this was report number 10, 1973, and it was going to Ted Kruger. There he is, Ted Kruger. Conversations with Kruger. I was a physicist working at that time for SEAL Corporation. Later. I then uh, moved into MRU, where I was Northwest Regional Director out of Washington, D.C. in Seattle, Washington. And we were based out of anesthesiology under John Benica. That's where they put the boys from Brazil. Physics didn't have the deep security and stuff like me. I had top secret clearance, vault permits. I could walk into vaults without a need to know I was a reader, like your, you know, three days of the Condor guy. I did, had no clue what I was doing. I was just putting things together. My ex-wife came into my life in the middle of that and saw some of it, and so she wrote a very nice paper on that called I Married the Wizard of Oz. Um, well, it talks about what she saw I did with military, and it was so awful. I had to walk. I, you know, I couldn't do that. I, I, I didn't want to, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just a country boy. I mean, really, I, I, you know, the Okanagans, that's where I was living. Okay, the model I developed Nastika, Llewellyn had Nastika conferences, and their Nasticon 5, they had the first psychic tournament where they brought Gene Dixon in and all these real famous psychics, and they had the foundation for the study of man, you know, the original Duke University people come in and test us. And I won the thing, hands down. In fact, I scared people because I'm not psychic. What I'm saying to you is everybody in this room what we're going to do is we're going to find out whether you would have been in the top five just by doing this subjective little test. I can tell whether or not you're someone I should have tested. Now, I can take you in a light state of hypnosis in a place right here, not where you are in your consciousness right now, but right here. And when you're in this place right here, your ability in guessing increases by 400 times. That means it's beyond statistical inference, which means statistical inference and our physics of realities do not exist in this place right here. And all these different states have something different 
that you can do from this place right here in consciousness. And the key is to direct that so that you have access to more efficient use of your mind, your, your brain, and what you do know. Information again, if you have enough information to ask a coherent question, you have enough information to answer it. You already have the answer, and what you're trying to do is form a dialogue on how to talk to yourself. So you can you go into the slate, get your answer, you come back out, and there it is for you. 400 times, if you guys want to work the slots. Um, anyway, um, well, we're going we're gonna to target great Randy and take him down first. This is some of our early biofeedback. That's what I looked like back then, doing biofeedback experiments. We were doing a lot of laboratories. Right now, I have in storage, I'm going to probably end up giving to the local Grants Pass Metaphysical Library uh, a, the same biofeedback autogen that NASA now uses on their NASA. I have a complete laboratory with uh, German Indibet and Mora that Iona and I use to write our books on Yogatronics and Electromagic, which is video feedback systems. We've developed some technologies where you can put a small group of electrodes on your head, change your sex for the day, like you would a pair of clothing. <laughs> Simple. Okay. Measuring ESP abilities, we're going to all take this piece of paper now and we're going to ask the first question. Question one. This is all based on your own subjective beliefs. And it's your beliefs and your value systems that we created this questionnaire that will target whether or not you are like really good. Like I had 100,000 grunts in the Navy and they wanted me to pull out the top 2% to test for ESP. How do I do that? I needed a, a form like this one. This one's for you to keep. First answer, first question. I believe in the existence of ESP or I do not believe. As it turns out, people that don't believe will exhibit paranormal phenomena in their disbelief. So, you know, just answer subjectively, honestly, as best you can. Second question. I tend to be serious minded about most things. I tend to be happy go lucky about most things. You know, are you anal? <laughs> third question. There's a third question and fourth question. I want you to start answering these questions now, and then we're going to grade it. This is one of the first things that came out of our study. I came out with a subjective questionnaire that absolutely pins it right down which top 2% in a group wants to be studied. I'll bet you all of you are going to come out of it. <laughs> Probably, Ashlyn would be like that for me. Does left or right handedness have any kind of Yes, -nesses. yes -nesses. Some are ambidextrous and do both. Like, uh, you know, Da Vinci. <laughs> ah. Yeah, and he did his notes backwards. He did them forward, backwards, and upside down, actually. He did them in three different directions, actually. Right. You know, because he's not only writing backwards, there's also writing forwards, backwards, but you're writing backwards, forwards, or, well, that's different similarities and similar differences. That's Boehm, excuse me. <laughs> Just kidding. What if you enjoy spending time alone and also enjoy spending time with others? Which do you most prefer? Are you grumpy? No. Okay, well, there it is, answer. Subjective. You gotta pick one of the two. Okay. And the one you choose will also tell me something. Well, we got another candidate. We'll have to make her down here. Okay, number six, shortcomings, often critical. We know who we are, don't we? <laughs> Sorry, Iona, I didn't mean that, honestly. <laughs> oh, that's true. I perform best when following the directions of another. I have experience which seems to involve ESP. Question nine. Do you have things that often involve? Do you notice it a lot in your life? Not very much. And you know, um, some of this stuff like um, deja vu, and I can't put my finger on it, but there's something going on here, but I don't know what it is. That doesn't have to be ESP, but you got a, a sixth sense going that's feeding some dialogue that you don't, it's not coming from your five senses, apparently. Somehow it's coming in from some other place. As it turns out, you will find that all extrasensory perception has to do with a hallucination of either time or space because you either see it happening, you hear it happening, you feel it happening, you, it's one of your five senses. You just smell something doesn't smell right here. And of course you know about the gut. 
where you have neurotransmitters in your gut, just like you do in the brain. So there's all kinds of possibilities going on with the way you're dialoguing with the way you gurgle in the food you eat. We've got this all right down to the pats, man, I'll tell you. Because I'm going to, okay, question 10. I most enjoy perceiving what an artist has created in his work. I most enjoy making my own artistic creation. We know them and us, right? <laughs> some are process oriented and some aren't. It's path 25. Okay, here's how to score it. You can just do this yourself. If question A, question one is an A, give yourself 20%. If question nine was an A, it's 20. If it's question, if you did B, it's 10%. Dream recall, question five, if you gave A, give yourself 20%. I know, wait, 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 wait. Well, it's all right here. Just what is it? Okay, one, two, and then we'll yeah, the answer sheet. I'm jumping around on purpose exactly. to keep you from being linear. <laughs> I gotcha. I know, I did that good, didn't I? You did. That's why I did it that way. We did 100,000 people with this test and found the 3% from this test is how we arranged on these answers and the weighing factors we give to each one. It took us a long time to come up with this test that is absolutely based on belief systems and values. I can prove it all, but it doesn't matter because proof is arbitrary. I don't know of any law in physics that's lasted longer than 20 years. Well, then what makes you think physics has got the answers? You know, I'm going to end this talk tonight by saying, so as chemistries come out of alchemy, so now magic emerges from physics. Magic turns out to be a more highly evolved form of physics. And you people don't know that yet because you probably don't have the proper definition of what magic is. But we're going to start by simply saying magic is an art form. It's something, it's, a, it's like, a, like, like painting or sculpting. It is the art of changing consciousness at will. And you have lots of different ways you can do that. You can eat grass with dimethyltryptamine in it if you want to. You can do it by holding your nose and turning blue. You can do it with sleep deprivation. You can do it with a hammer. I particularly like my whip. I like to do that a lot. That works really good. I slap myself. Oh, I feel really good then, man. I'm kidding. <laughs> but altered states are the whole realm of it. And each place is something you can do that you can't do in conscious state and is why magic is how you play yourself back and forth. And if you know how to brain drive, using brain drivers, where you come from a different place in the brain, you're able to witness your behavior and be able to surgically remove things. It's like the next evolution in terms of awareness. And so there's some possibilities here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some equations for how it all works. And then I'm going to suggest, let's do a weekend retreat, cheap, where we camp out, and for two days, I take you down into the state, bring you back up, and measure your ESP before you do it and after you do it, and we'll tell you to see how good you are then, in terms of dropping down in the state and then having intuition, real intuition, stuff that is measurable, consistent, reproducible, repeatable. So we have a mathematical expression for consciousness now and how the mind and the body work as one unit. And Descartes was completely wrong when he separated them. We're going to talk about the non-local mind that creates your reality and how you can change that with your attitudes and belief systems. If they're not working for you, you just change them like you would a pair of clothing. And if Christianity isn't working or Taliban, become a Buddhist or maybe an atheist or not even having anything to do. You know, when I worked military, we called belief systems like religions cultural viruses that left so many dead. So, you know, they're illusionary, they're not real, they have no foundation at all other than something that probably happened prior to childhood memory. And so they don't serve you now as well as they could when you probably established them for survival. News page two, if that's true, then that means that belief systems and your values should be part of your search for your, your, your calling and character. Who you are, that's James Illman. 
That's the soul's code in search of character and calling. What is your purpose for being here? Intentionality turns out to be one of the more important aspects for driving. I had a girlfriend that until I did this test with her and we started measuring our values, I had no idea. I placed spirituality as the most important thing. It didn't matter what had happened. If, if, I, if I gained spirituality, it was worth it, right? Her top value was peace and serenity over truth. She did not want to hear truth if it disrupted peace and serenity. There's a lot of people like that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different way of being, and it leads to different realities. And if this reality isn't working for you, what, Bush? <laughs> you think he's our president? You think that 9-11 actually happened? Give me a, I have friends in Canada that are really worried about you guys and what we're going to do for civil war. I basically see the United States breaking into nine countries, and you live predicated on how many civil rights you want to give up. Think about that one for a minute. Did everybody get this first um, testing? On number five, what's yes. the one, two, three, four, and 20%, but there's no question this, in front of it. I don't understand the number five. Okay. If you answered question number two with zero, or with B, you get zero. If you answered number four with B, you get zero. If you answered number six with A, you get 5%. That's our two points. It, yeah, that's how I, I that's, there's, there's grading in there. Uh, B, B uh, yes, uh, yes. Just add those up, and then. Oh, which which uh, which one? No, question number two. If you answered it with B, you get zero. <laughs> if you question number four, if you answered with B, you get zero. What about eight? Question number eight. If you answered A, you get four. If you answered B, you get oh. If you answered B, um, you get. Um, how do you get 20% at the bottom next to uh, She's four. got these backwards wrong. That should be four down there. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Four should be down here. That's, we oh, made this oh, PowerPoint oh, up today. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I just threw this together. You did good. Well, we'll see. This news is I haven't run through the whole thing yet. So. Well, 20% is if you answered question eight with B, uh, you get 20% as opposed to A, which would be 10%. Okay. okay, question three is B with 10%. Let's go down. Okay. Now, there's things going on in the body that I started writing about in the early 70s called Schumann's resonance. It has to do with voice of the planet, what I call voice of the planet. The uh, idea is that from the aortic arch, there's a pulse beat that's exactly the same at 8.3 hertz. And it's Schumann's resonance, and we've evolved to this point because we're talking to the universe right now as we speak. There's a dialogue going on, and we're changing reality. And since I'm not allowed to hypnotize you, I could probably do that. They say I can't do any guided meditation. Yes, ma'am, okay. So, okay, so, but I could change everybody's reality of seeing whether it was light outside what time of day it is, how long the time went, your experience of these things, it's all arbitrary. And because it's arbitrary, you can choose how you want to perceive things. And there's some rules on this, you know, in terms of how you set up your, your, day, your filters, you know, how you, what you filter, what you see, what you choose not to see. Because I'm going to end this talk with, I wouldn't have seen it if I hadn't have believed it. You know, it's all in the mind's eye. It's, this is where it starts. It starts here, and there's this very thin layer. A friend of mine, Barry Hofstedler, he's the, the naked dick. He says, there's the voice of reason and the voice of coyote. <laughs> you know, the coyote is the one that wants you to step outside the box and be naughty. And being naughty isn't wrong. You know, let's take some drugs or do something awful. You know, voice of coyote, you're stepping outside the box. That's the only way you have personal growth. Voice of reason keeps you inside the box. You're safe. You're comfortable. Everything's predictable. You know what's going to happen. Voice of coyote is the same voice, by the way, but it's just the other side of the membrane talking to you about, ah, wouldn't it be nice, though, if you could? Um, voice of coyote. So you need to learn 
who you are in that regard. And you all know exactly what I'm talking about because we all have this distinction. We have our own little metaphor in the way we relate to it. This is how you form your dialogue with self. This is union with self. First stage toward God realization. And to understand how these frequencies work allows you to understand that maybe what I want to do is work in a different part of the brain because looking out from there, like a meditator for 30 years, for example, is into bliss states where everything just kind of flows for me. Like when my car blew up. My, I have a 280Z and it blew up. <gasps> what happened? A friend of mine just handed me his car. His wife's out of town, she won't know. And he handed me his car for a couple days so I could get a, I bought this worthless van for 150 bucks and now I'm getting around. And it's, thank you by the way, very, I mean it just, I mean it was, it made it simple. Yeah, it just, it's just like, I didn't know how it was gonna end, I just knew I was gonna not have a problem, it would happen somehow, you know. Because you make it happen. You make it. You see it in your mind's eye, and then you can make it physical, like with a thought form, and how you take a thought form out. And we're going to talk about how thought forms work, and how they work physically in the body. And that's the stuff I developed with Navy that then led me to do all the other paranormal studies I did. This is the early stuff. It's a non-local mind. Start with a brain, and you go right up into the sun with this cymatic action that's going across the surface of the sun, and Schumann's resonance, and the voice of the planet talking to us. This is from my old talk. Now, metaphors have many, many forms. I've seen these Hopi paintings that create rain, and how do those Buddhists turn it off? That looks like a solid state physics device to me. So talking about event horizons and precursor waves is only one little rotor rooter way of belief systems, has nothing at all to do with the idea of resonance and metaphor. Okay, are we grasping this idea? Sort of, kind of, maybe? Questions? No? Yes? Yeah, the waves resonance with, can you explain, you, you, use, um, you use a lot of words that are very specific, yes. very technical. Okay, sorry. And I would like Stop my to bad. have a bridge, you know, just, just give mm -hmm. us a little bit. So well, can... you know what Schumann's resonance is. You're not familiar with that. Okay, it's what migratory, how birds migrate, for example. Okay, yeah. There's a coding that's a geometrical thing with the Earth's physical parameters. Okay. That means Schumann's resonance is not changing. It's a geometric thing. Okay. okay. Interestingly, you know the Titan, the, the planetoid Titan? Mm -hmm. Schumann's resonance for the Titan, this is all very metaphorical now, you'll love it, is 2.4 hertz, which has to do with mind control. Hmm, what does this all mean? Ah, yeah, yeah, geometries. Uh, it was Roger Penrose that wrote that book uh, called The uh, Geometric Universe. He's at Princeton, one of the people I key off of. Uh, I like twister space. I believe that twister space, vortex space, uh, he talks about it to be different than Hawking's when they co-author books together. He talks about twister space being the formation of matter. You know how it twists in on itself like a mini black hole. That's Roger Penrose, where Hawking's talked more in terms of event horizons and black holes. Event horizon. Right. Okay. And what event horizon? Yeah. It's um, you got this black hole right here, yeah. and you got reality right up into that event horizon. Where it's, all of a sudden, it's no longer part of that reality. It's that reality. That that is what that is called the event horizon is you can see it from here, but it would be in it, you're not here, you're there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what an event horizon is. Something you can see, yes ma'am? Could you describe human's resonance more systematically and how it relates to the Earth? Well, the ionosphere has a cavity with solar winds hitting it that cause a resonance pattern in the ionosphere that's a standard eight point, was it 8.4? Iona? at 8.4, 3, 8.3 hertz. And that resonant thing is probably happening at this point on the Earth, and that's how birds are able to triangulate where they are using that frequency band that's up in the ionosphere. Now there's been some concern. Uh, Nick Begich, a guy I co-author with, has written books on harp, 
and how HARP might be changing it or using it in some way. I can explain more about what HARP is really doing if you're interested, but it had to do with the space shuttle Columbia and the accidents. They are trying to create a plasmoid or a slip space with no inertia where they can accelerate something up to about Mach 50. And this is some technologies that came out of Navy that uh, Eslin and some others have developed where they create a subspace with microwave that creates a frictionless place that you can take someone, anything, and accelerate it to Mach 50. You can put it to the other side of the Earth in seconds. And a jet goes, a fighter jet goes Mach? 20, Mach 70, wham! and there's no inertia on the body, that kind of thing. This, I don't know where the technologies originally came from, but it's done with microwave and resonant cavity oscillators. And it creates a slub space of physics place where there's inertialess space in a little plasmoid. It's a plasma. A plasmoid is a circular piece of plasma surrounded by a plasma sheath or a magnetic field that focuses and keeps everything concentrated in its first state. And what they tried to do is they tried to do the shuttle Columbia, and it, they didn't get it big enough, and so the plasma formed around the space shuttle before it even went into outer space, and that's what spread it over six states. Yes, Siona. How does the pulse of human's resonance as it travels around the Earth relate to the I'm sorry? How does the pulse of human resonance... Why don't you, since you helped me write the paper, ask that. <laughs> then kill me. <laughs> why don't you... Why don't you... Yeah, well, <laughs> what we found with the Edgar Mitchell studies was that psi information was independent of time and space. We concluded that it was instantaneous, that it was instantaneous with mass in front of it so it wasn't, you know, attenuated or lost signal, that kind of thing. We found that it was something else which led us later to possibly conclude that every space, every point in space was simply connected. And then predicated on what part of the brain you're working from predicates on how you process that information. And if you don't like that place, you go over to this place in the brain and you got a different kind of an answer with a similar solution. Yes, ma'am. Eslin? Did you say Eslin? Did I say Eslin? Oh, Eslin. Eslin is the inventor. I, I taught at Eslin, yes, years ago. No, Eslin uh, is the solid state physicist for Navy that invented HARP. Eslin. Yeah, Dr. Eslin. Ten minutes. Okay. So I'm starting to understand that everything that we look at is in some kind of metaphor that we're really not getting the whole picture and so there's with a little bit different focus possibly have other acts, things accessible to us and so I developed a series of equations we're going to start them now and the first is the postulate the conscious experience where you are right now is associated with a nervous process. This is basically Pew Horich in his book Beyond Telepathy, which takes place above a critical level of awareness. In other words, you have a bunch of awarenesses, and there's this critical level where you, oh, yeah, or, huh? Critical level of alertness, okay? That's an extremely important definition point. That a place between, oh, yeah, or, um, mm, you know, you're not aware. You don't have the awareness on a conscious level. Okay? This says, and it varies, and we'll call that I sub C. That's the awareness. Okay, so we're going to relate this to hypnosis in a minute. Psi energy, arbitrarily defined as E, is an equivalent of a field of extrasensory phenomena, you know, that occurs. It's like an organ of energy. And what we would in a three-dimensional world called energy of some kind, it's the ability to do work. You have knowledge of something. And then we had some correlates. It's not limited by time. It was not transformed by other energies, which means physical energies, kinetic energies could not come in and change it. So we have a new kind of energy that hasn't been defined before. I have on my website a paper called The Omega Principle, which is the energy which patterns randomness. And I wrote that in 72 for John White and some of his works out of Shambhala. And that basically shows that chi 
and piranha and orgone are all the same thing that we've been talking about in the literature from one century to another with Baron von Richten and some of the others that talk about these different forces. Correlate C, cyanide energy opera operates by manipulating the transformation of physical energies. In other words, it is the energy that moves what we now define as strong and weak force and magnetic force and some of the other forces that we define in nature. It is the actual manipulating thing that changes all of these things. And this is where the non-local mind is going to come in. From there, psi energy is responsible for extrasensory pergana and PK, outside and inside the body. Whether you choose to say you stop at this point right here or your electromagnetic field is extended out here is completely arbitrary in your worldviews. You are an electromagnetic entity. You are not a solid entity. You are an electromagnetic entity. A scintillating wave, you know, with interference patterns creating what you would call reality. One of the studies we did that was really interesting, we found using Dr. Captain Cathay's works from the uh, New Zealand Air Force, he wrote a thing called Harmonic 33, where he showed that there were high and node points on the Earth where the energies were very high and where they canceled out. And one of the places where they canceled out is uh, like the Bermuda Triangle. Now, what would happen if you had a DNA molecule and you had electromagnetic fields that's projecting reality? What happens if there's no electromagnetic fields? What happens to the reality? Doesn't exist. Now, does it exist or not exist? Are the planes there or not there? The DNA is there. That's the lens. What do you think your brain is? I, 33 years ago, I said the DNA was a three-dimensional hologram of force space, who you were, are, and will be. Now, 30 years later, I'm saying that the brain is this big crystal. It's an amorphous semiconductor, liquid crystal phases. It's constantly changing with dialogue with what's going on with your environment. And I'm suggesting that it's a four-dimensional hologram of five space and that you can have any kind of reality you want predicated on where part of the brain you're working from. We'll go ahead and take a break now, and we'll pick this up afterwards, okay? Cheers. Yeah. So, the next series of questions, postulate four. Psi energy is the product of some aspect of the metabolic process. I'm going to suggest that psi energy is part of your parasympathetic nervous system, like Andrea Puharich suggested in his book, Beyond Telepathy. I'm going to suggest that you can reprogram your parasympathetic nervous system for histamine release, for control of allergies, things like that. You can also train it for the increased production of psi. And there's some foods you can do that will make it better. We're going to talk about all of that tonight. The generation of psi energy, when you create psi energy, there is a rapid decrease in your level of alertness. In other words, there's a counteracting that every time you start to generate some energy, you drop below your threshold of awareness. It's a little battle you're playing that is why they all say to train the mind. Each conscious act has a limited duration. You can't hold a thought form very long before it's gone. We experience a permanent change of changing thoughts. And it's these thoughts that are creating our reality right now, undisciplined. Why our attention is permanently shifts from one object to another. That's because of the difference between concentration and meditation, where you have no thought. There's quite different. And you need to train the brain to do both of these things. How many people are meditate? How many people meditate every day? How many people meditate more than one hour every day? Good. This is like satsangi. I'm a satsang. I belong to Rod and Brooks. Rod, Brooks Newton, Rod was a student of mine at Evergreen when I taught at Evergreen before he married Brooks. 
So I've known these people a long, 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 long time. Uh, you know, 35 years or four, when he was up in Washington at Evergreen. I was first faculty there, teaching this course, by the way. When you think, whenever you think, right now, you're generating psi energy. It is like a thought form in magic. It's part of you, part of your ambiance and your physicalness. Now, it also automatically, when you create this thought, tends to pull the thought of awareness down to where you forget what you were thinking. So check and balance. Your belief systems can reinforce or re-enhance certain things. So that's one of the ways you use your belief systems. So now we come down to the equations. Postulate six. The intensity of conscious experience, the intensity of it, that's because when we talk about hypnosis, we talk about two things. You're all in a light state of hypnosis right now in the sense that you're listening to my voice over that of the fan. You're concentrating more. So really, what we talk about is the intensity or depth of listening to my voice over the fan. That's where the real power in psi energy forms, is that ability to go from that one place to the other in more depth. And so the first equation is the rate of change of psi energy is equal to some geographic constant, like you're in Nome, Alaska, or you're in the vortex, Oregon vortex, times the intensity of concentration. To put more properly, the rate of change as a function of time is equal to that geometric constant. And it'll vary on the Earth. Obviously, you have your position of power, what Kostanita called, you know, when you're in a negative ion environment, and you just feel really, really good because of the way the water is going into your cells rather than your urine. These kinds of things affect, that's the geographic variables that we included in this equation. And so we would say the energy itself is the intensity by how long a time you can hold that intensity. Well, if you can't hold it very long, then it should be simple that you repeat it over a series of period of times, the same thought form. And this is what Aleister Crowley wrote when he wrote the book Magical Child, which turned out to be a sex magic ritual that created a thing called World War II. That was the magical child that Crowley talked about as the creation of a sex magic ritual that created World War II. Now, it's an arbitrary thing to see events as they relate to thoughts. But you know how we all are again, we all meditate at the same hour of the day and the world's gonna change. That's what the whole idea is about, these concepts of thought forms. Now, if you want me to teach you, it'll take me two days. Because what I need to do is teach you how to test yourself. You know, there's some little testing you know, with cards that you do little games with, and we get a literal on whether or not you're, you know, you're a psychic or you're below psychic or you're whatever you are. Everybody's different. And wherever that is, that's your benchmark. And within two days, of teaching you altered states and how to do self-hypnosis, I can improve your ability and scores 400 times, no matter where you are, including being a top-end psychic and taking you out to this edge. I've done this with more than 100,000 vets. This is what we did for SEAL Corporation in the early 70s. This is where extrasensory perception started. Now Targ and Putoff and some of these others are doing things with remote viewing, which deal instead of inside the body, it's outside the body. It's a PK phenomena. It's a different way of looking at the way you're collecting information. The fact is, it's all it is is information. And if it's a holographic universe, then it's not about decoherence and entanglement. What it's about is information and resolution of information. The system in which you, what is that, chunk down on terms of whether you're going to see if you're working with a tire or a lug nut or whatever that is and the way you chunk down and, on something. Those levels of grouping information are called memes. And man, 
the book that I'm writing with Nick has eight chapters. Each one is based on a different level of chunking the information of which foods would be in a physical plane point, right? You are what you eat, that kind of thing. All of this has metaphor all the way down through because eating is also eating when you're putting things in your ears. There's all kinds of food. So it's you are what you eat. Now, the things to come will be this book we're talking about right now. This is my ESP book, and it has a whole series of sections. And if I have a two-week, a two-day period with you, you know, I'll start it at 10 in the morning, and we knock at 4, and we do it for two days. I can drop you down into hypnosis several times to teach you where that place is and teach you how to use this formula. And I figure we could do a group here. We could probably do one at the Grants Pass because they have a new carpet. Because when, when I do this, you need to lay out, you know, and go into late hypnosis, hypnotic states. What I'll do is I'll take you down to hypnosis, and I'm not going to take you down over to here. I'll take you down right where the ESP part works, right here. And I'll show you where that place is. And it'll be like once you've done it a couple of times over you know, a two-day period, and then we'll test you. And we'll see if you've improved. And you do your own testing. So if you people are interested in that, we could probably put something together really inexpensive, because I'd really like to experiment with you guys on it. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. I'm going to turn you into all a bunch of a bunch of psychics out here, and then you're, what we were going to do was we were going to offer uh, the psychic network back in the early 90s when the psychic networks were going crazy and all these friends of mine were trying to make extra money being, you know, low, low lives on the internet and answering, you know, uh, psychology 101 questions. Oh, well, we have a way of grading on who's, you know, capable of re measure their ESP. We just measure it. It's a simple thing to do. It's a simple chapter in my book. That chapter is on a download on my website, so help yourself. The book should be out shortly. That's going to be published in the year 2007. Actually, Nick Begich wants to publish it this month. And I want to do an eight-hour seminar. That's what I want to do, maybe over a two-day period. You know, eight hours, or actually what's better is not eight hours, but six hours, two days. You know, where you know, there's a little bit of interaction and dialogue, and people get to know each other and that kind of thing. I think that's very good and a simple a uh, series of hypnosis uh, states where I can show you how to use these equations to ask questions, and then what you do is you go into the state, uh, you ask the question, this is how it works, you ask the question in your conscious state, then you go into this state, and you have a cloud that's appearing in front of you, and the cloud is getting thinner, and the answer is just starting to come across through the other side of that cloud. And you wait, and you wait. You do this place, and you get the answer, and it's 400 times more accurate than where you are right here. It works, and we, 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 we think we now understand how it works with metabolism and diet, um, and that's what I'm going to do. But anyway. I wanted to tell you that that's something I'm hoping enough of you are interested in a contact for an event, maybe if we need get maybe 20 people um, or couples. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is take you down into that state so you know that place, and we'll then test your ESP. We'll actually measure it. We'll see. That's pretty straightforward, right? Does it work? You'll be able to tell me that way in a heartbeat. Next step. This is Nick Begich's new book. It's Controlling the Human Mind, the Technologies of Political Control, or Tools for Peak Performance. Now, this just came out. This, by the way, is his daughter, and I love the way he did the temples in the eye, the light in the eye, and how, you know, you guys are all, you think you're in the matrix. You have no idea the technologies we're currently using on you, including the television, to control you. I can exactly say to you, you think 9-11 happened? How come you, if you know that it didn't happen, how come you're not in the streets like they did? I'm mad as hell and I'm not taking it anymore. Canada's worried about how you're going to react when you find out that the whole thing's a dupe. This year, the way the government got our money was, you know, raising the oil, bear, the oil price. Last year, it was heating, you know, in California, the ripoff. Each year, they come up with some other way. They rip you off and... You just accept it because you're so caught up in trying to make your local rent. You can't deal with the bigger picture. Well, that sounds to me like mind control at its very finest. You know, who is it? Well, I did this 
this interview with, uh, with Dennis Kucinich, he said, New World Order, get used to it. It's already a done deal. We are no longer are the United States of America. We, that ended almost 15, almost 15 years ago. Well, yeah, there's lots of different setups, you know, from skulls on down. But the bottom line is, Bush is not our president, and neither is Arnold Schwarzenegger going to be. Watch what happens next, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Well, can you imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger is our next president? Bet she runs. I'll bet you that's why that Jerry Woods' guy from England went over talking to him yesterday. Yeah. What do you think's going on, huh? Okay, so watch what happens. The new book that Nick and I wrote is Freeing Your Mind, The Brain Spa, which is technologies for the evolution of consciousness. How to use these tools to go somewhere beyond political control. Now, I don't know how it's all going to end. I'm guessing it's going to be a natural disaster like storms in the Pacific. I don't know. The infrastructure is going to get taken out, and Canada is really worried about how the United States is going to do it. What do you think about Beirut? What would you do if you found out that the Pentagon lied, and it wasn't an airplane that crashed into the Pentagon, and that Bush really didn't win the election, and Gore rolled over? What do you think about all that? How would you feel about that if you found out that that was true? What would you do? Would you go in revolt? What would you do? They got the military. We don't. Well, no, 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 no. This is KKK land, buddy. We all got our rifles and dogs and, you know, this is uh, where the Grand Dragon lives. Don't give me that shit. No, um, th you know, there's going to be an accountability, and I don't think it's going to be very pleasant, and I don't think some of us are going to survive it. And I think that what's ultimately going to happen will be a series of countries predicated on how many civil rights you want to give up. And I think that's how it's going to be. And that's the difference between Montana and Florida, where you want to live. You tell me. So are you going to stay here? <laughs> you really think I'm already here? I'm already broadcasting from Mars. This is a hologram. This isn't real. <laughs> you were going to ask me a question. You forgot it. I saw yeah. three top secret papers when I worked in the military. This was in 1972. I saw these papers. In 1964, the paper I saw was a Mariner flyby of Mars that spotted water. We knew in 1964 that Mars had water. In 1965, we detonated a nuclear warhead on the south pole of Mars in our first attempt to terraform it. Didn't work. And in 1968, one year before the moon, I saw a top secret document that said there was a manned expedition, joint manned expedition to Mars. We were never interested in the moon because the moon has nothing there. It's a big gravity well. We can launch from L5 position cheaper than, Mar than the moon. We were interested in Mars because it had water. That was one year before the so-called landing on the moon. Yes, I'm sure we've landed on the moon, but I don't think we did it when we said we did it, and I think that the public has been duped on levels you can't even imagine. And what are you going to do when you find out that this is all true? Are you going to quit? Get angry? Or maybe go somewhere else. Now, we have a bunch of power tools that work. We're going to talk about a few of these. There's one called Holosync. How many people are familiar with CenterPoint? I'm in the process right now of doing course number one. I've registered, already done course one. I'm doing it again. And then I'm registered for their number two and number three course. They're eight weeks every bi week. You do a course. So that's a full year of therapy I'm going to do in terms of learning how to change my beliefs. And while I'm doing it, I'm gleaning out of it. Bill Harris has given me permission. I'm going to write about it and how it works in physics. 
in terms of using special kinds of brain drivers, virtual audio. We have a bunch of stuff. Last time I was here, I surprised you with some stuff like virtual audio. I'm not, that's, I don't have the soundtrack with me, so I'm going to go. But virtual audio has to do with the way we map sound. I have some demos that will scare the hell out of you. It's like out of Videodrome. Stuff you've never even heard anything like it. And it's available now as downloads. I'll put some up on my site for you to download if you want some WAV files. That you need headphones. You need specialized headphones so that they have low frequency response somewhere around. I think Philips, Walmart has a Philips headphone that goes down to about 12 cycle hertz. Sony's, all your Sony's start at 20. They're useless. You want to get down around the 8 to 12 cycle. And if you can do that, I can scare you with some new cut technologies and sound. So what it's, does that do? What, what, what does what this technology do? Can you These explain do? about it? Yeah, what do they do? I can make a sound inside your head that you can't tell as you not talking to yourself. And uh, so, so what's so the purpose? So who's talking to you? Are you talking to yourself, or am I controlling your thoughts by talking to you the way I want you to think? Oh. I can do that with sound now. OK, so what's the benefit of that? You can use it to change your belief systems and in terms of affirmations. You can do a subliminal that is on steroids beyond NLP. Okay. What about love? What about Eros, Philo, Agape, or Telema? Okay. Which one are well, we talking about here? Okay. I'm talking about <laughs> the, the All ability. All we need is love. Yeah, no, I know no. that place. No, no. <laughs> what about, no, I'm not, talking, I'm not talking on that level. And okay. I'm not talking on light love. Love is below. only one of five in Gimel. I'm, I'm talking you, about divine love. Yes, yeah. In, uh, in the Jewish system. That is system, within. That in is the within. old books, they had a thing called Gimel, which was five, of light, life, love, liberty, and law. And they're all important in the balance and scheme of things. It isn't just about love. It's light, life, love, liberty, and law. And that's called gimel, or the camel, which is a trail in the desert that you follow. And love is, like, extremely important. And of course, if you're getting into telema, the love of true will, or thelema, which is, you know, the love of will, your true will. Um, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. Magic, it turns out, is a more highly evolved form of physics than physics ever dreamed of, and is why magic was reserved for the ultra elite of Europe for centuries. And it was only this last century when it was Aleister Crowley and its assignment with drugs to alter states of consciousness that it fell out of disrespect. But make no mistake, Drugs work just like magic has always been and is the foundation for things like the Hopi, the real people, the Aborigines. They have a technology that we don't. And what's really missing in physics is that mystery school that was originally present, that part of not knowable. Didn't work like that, where physics makes the assumption that at some century, it will be a law, which doesn't necessarily have to be that way because some things don't work like that. Only man hasn't learned that yet. And actually, hopefully some of us are. There's a whole group of us now that are trying to unite mind and body back into one system. Right. So it's about the mind and the body right. going in harmony. Right. All right. And love is the law, love under will is the higher form of love in telema, or thelema, which is the love of true will, your purpose, and your calling. That's right. OK, so just we're on the same page here. So I'm talking about, this is an artistic piece that my ex-wife did called the, it's, a, it's actually, <laughs> it's the, uh, what does she call the throne chariot of God? It's, uh, what is that, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, what did, we, what did we call this? This is the, uh, the Kabbalah, the, uh, the, Life. I don't know, what is what am the word I'm looking for? The, huh? Diamond body. Yes, it's not Diamond Body. We've written three books on video feedback systems called The Diamond Body, Electromagic, and Yogatronics, where we use video feedback systems, change things in you. That's a new set of books that are coming out. But this is different. This is from Merkaba mysticism and was called the, um, 
Um, she's the goddess. What, what, what's this? This is called the. Uh, um, uh, uh, Frater Akkad. He called it. Star goddess. This is the star goddess. It turns out that this geometry, if you, if you envision it in your mind's eye, at your third eye, you actually create changes physically in your body. With, uh, and what you have is basically a time machine or a spaceship. You can travel by doing it in your mind's eye. And that's how the real people are doing it. That's how Grandfather Joseph, when he talked about it with the Hopi, that's how the Trabiander talk about it, and the importance of death and that moment of death. That's why your saints throughout history talk about it from that kind of point of view. It's a geometric thing, and it's all in metaphor. Now, there's other ways to do it. There's Tai Chi, there's yoga, any time you focus on breathing as a discipline, you, this is like one of the important things you could be doing. It's like whether you jog, ride your bicycle, or do like I do, or I speak. <laughs> yeah, I have voice, con breath control. Journaling. I happen to use the, the uh, uh, Kaplan Williams works. I like Stephen Kaplan Williams. I really liked it. Uh, but honest journaling, where you keep what we call a magical memory of what actually happened so that 10 years from now you can go back there and you can read it on how you felt about something. That's why you keep a diary. These are tools that make you who you are. Now, I'm going to talk about the food of the century. This is where 87 of you from last time, within a week and a half, came for a physical visit to my home in Grants Pass to buy this stuff. We have hybridized a special mushroom that grows at this altitude on dead insects. And what we did is we hybridized it by injecting diamondback rattler venom in the mycelium at a critical stage to hybridize it for polysaccharides and beta-glucans. I now have a product I brought samples to give everybody here tonight, because taking it is a whole lot different than me talking about it. Well, how many people have eaten cordyceps? Does, has it changed you? Highly recommend it. Rick has really good cordyceps. The stuff you have there is very potent. Well, there's, there's nothing else on earth like it because it's uh, Aloha I Medicinal. No, really yeah. Seriously. We use a lot, make extract. Let's get you on. Well, I'm not looking for testimonials, but what I'm trying to tell you is we have something. Now, I'm about to make the next page on this. This is Nick Begich's latest vitamin line on monoatomic elements using, it's called the eighth element, and it's a custom blend of the hybridized cordyceps, and there's a reason why he's using the hybridized cordyceps with the monoatomic elements. What that is, here it is, you're going to hear it first here tonight. ATP, atrazine triphosphate, is the single most important molecule in the body other than DNA. It is what is required in every cell to start and end any enzymic process. It's the handshake. I'm going to suggest that it, ATP is cold fusion process in the body. I have here as ATP producing ADP and phosphorus. I've got a second one where it creates ATP itself and, and hydrogen because it's Brown's gas form of cold fusion, the one we have at MIT. And really it has to do with the shape of the cytoplasmic generator in the ATP molecule that shapes the plasma sheath It creates the heat for the cold fusion process of the plasma form. And so you can eat it, and our mushroom will increase your ATP levels by 28%, which means you can take cold fusion in and have speed. Coca-Cola, right now, Asian Coca-Cola, is using a nanometer. I brought a sample of my nanopowder. I have it at 40 nanometers. <laughs> I was at this conference, at World Nutri Conference, and all these physicists from biophysics or from Cornell and they're designing these molecules to shape their thing. And what I did is I ran my product through a jet engine at Mach 7. <laughs> Mechanical? <laughs> yeah, it didn't cost me money. I'm going to suggest that this is where cold fusion processes occur in the body and I can show you how it looks like a little generator that's creating Brown's gas hydrogen. Yes, sir. 
Um, what's the significance of increasing your ATP in your body? Cold fusion, it means you have uh, the energy that you didn't have before, like when you're droopy and you don't feel very good and you wanna take some methamphetamine, this is better. And actually, it's a food, FDA classified as generally recognized as safe, no toxicity. And it blows cancer away because basically your speed is oxygen on a cellular level. That's what a polysaccharide is. It's an oxygen molecule going in on a cellular level. And cancer cannot exist in that environment. And we're blowing it away. All forms of cancer. We've got agaricus and the coriolis and the reishi and the myotaki and all these others, which I still owe you some. I didn't forget. Either. Yeah, I don't forget anything. You know what I mean? It's one of my curses. Uh, is, will you try being me? <laughs> Imagine me, I'm a great tour director, I'll tell you. And over here, I'm your Yule Gibbons for the herb trade. I got that part down. Okay, so you go over here, and if you're eating ATP in your diet, it means you're 28% more efficient in anything that you want to do. And if you can generate dimethyltryptamine in the delta state, the back end of your brain during deep sleep, you can also dial in the age you want to be. And we're going to talk about that next time I come. So, so that's not eating ayahuasca or crabgrass. That's doing it in a generation thing with a thing you're doing with your brain. And if you can do that in Delta State, you can create immortality. I believe so. That's another Barry Hofstetler thing that's to be proven, but I think he's on to something. His Who's naked that? dick. Barry Hofstetler, first centerfold in Playgirl. He's got a nice, he lives, he was, he's not, he's not one of the people Iona hangs out with. Yeah, she's a bad girl. <laughs> well, uh, let, me, let me go on. So I'd like to end this talk with the angel from the abyss by suggesting that our life forms on this planet you haven't even met yet. There are mammals on this planet that are more evolved technically than men. Oh, yeah. Dolphins' form of language, the clicks and whistles, is a form of Clifford algebra. They have a redundancy coefficient that's 10 times more efficient than Hebrew. Guys, the devil, my And who's higher on the food chain? Orca has a cerebral cortex that's twice the size of man. He's firing 60% of it. If you want to know who God is, not our God, but God, that's probably Orca. His biosphere, compared to man's, in terms of survival on this earth, he's far superior. He's better designed, he's got a better brain, and he's not at war with himself. Okay, so there are angels on this earth. You know, they talk about Morgellons disease. How many people have heard about Morgellons disease? Okay, so Morgellons disease is this, this weird icky thing where things crawl around under your skin like a parasite, pop up with little blue filters and pop back down in the skin. And it's just been observed in the six states where the Space Challenger, Space uh, Shuttle Challenger blew up. And you know what they recovered in the Space Challenger? The nematode experiments, they were alive. That was the only thing that lived. And probably they got exposed to life forms in the xenosphere, and that's what came down as a mutated nematode, which we now call Morgellons disease, is what I'm guessing. It's something from us. It's, you know, when we step out of, out of, out of, out of the back doors, we got, what is it, poison oak and all kinds of things to be aware of. News, news flash. That's a guess. I, you know, nobody knows what it is. And so I like to end the cock by saying as chemistry has come out of alchemy, so now magic will emerge from physics. And this is my website if you want to read more and all of that. I'm going to be in Hawaii in September with Dr. Elizabeth Rusher. Uh, I, they're bringing me in as the plasma physicist, not her. <laughs> now I got the moxie, I can wheel in my ears. Um, I'm going to be, um, I've been invited to a special thing in Amsterdam, but uh, it's a private party and I don't have that kind of money. What I need is a patron like Nick has. He's got Dorothy Lay. What we're doing is building a brain spa, the foundation of which will be a functional NMR where you can watch where something in your brain changes from being sensation to being pain, and you see it in three dimensions with special goggles, and you can do feedback systems and move it back into the sensation area for control of pain. And that's our first application. There's only two of them right now. The one is at the Mayo Clinic, the other is at Stanford, and if Dorothy Lay likes the one at Stanford, She's going to buy her own, and we're going to set up a shop to set up the tools to talk our walk. 
and how to change your beliefs and your filters if they're not meeting your goals and you'd like to move to the next level and you'd like to have lots of money and be thin and you know whatever you want you can have where are you going to set that up uh, right now the uh, the money says uh, Seattle it's Microsoft who wants to underwrite it for us they've 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 ponied up a half a billion dollars toward it wow. but I don't know yet I grew up in Seattle I don't like Seattle either so I have some reasons good and bad about Seattle but Seattle probably that's what, what they're talking about now for the first brain spa if it works it'll be syndicated and we'll put one down here in Ashland you know, have your sensory deprivation chamber and your biofeedback and all the rest of your little toys and whistles, right? But we'll put in a functional NMR for getting pain, that kind of thing. Questions? Yes? Okay. Okay. There's two silly questions. Uh, one was, uh, you mentioned Coca-Cola, and you didn't finish. Oh, Coca-Cola Asia has... Um, has put in all of their soft drinks our 40 nanometer product because it doesn't cloud the water and it stays in suspension and all of Asia now is drinking it like they're getting cocaine or caffeine from their coca-cola drink the oxygen is rich enough in that and because it's in a nanometer you have hundred percent absorption rather than the mushroom as it is now you maybe get what 38 percent absorption in the gut something like that I'm recommending that you shovel down two tablespoons a day or more in a smoothie and watch what happens next in the three days. I'm going to give you all at least a week's worth of anybody that wants some mushroom want to try it. That'll be plenty to let you know where that handwriting is. The other part is, uh, my, uh, my question is, you mentioned Alistair Crowley a few times. Crowley, yeah. yeah. Crowley. No, I'm quoting Crowley. I wasn't oh, okay. trying to quote the Bible. Okay. I was quoting Crowley. Okay. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. I don't agree with it. Well, that means you're loving and open to everybody unless, uh, you know, love is the law, love under will, unless it deters you from your own path, in which case it's not love anymore. My path is my love. So sounds to me like you might want to have a change in your belief systems I just to see where it takes you in terms of, you know, love and romance. No. Trust me, <laughs> there's all kinds of possibilities. And when you say, well, I don't believe that, okay, that's arbitrary because you can't prove it. I can't prove it. They're all based on what? Something that probably happened before we were born. Mom had an argument and you came out with an attitude. Don't give me that shit with that grin there, buddy. I've read all of those books. And so I've been there and done that. And what I have found is the whole thing of beliefs. I don't believe that. Yes, I do. That's completely arbitrary. Totally. And you think an alien comes down here and believes in Jesus Christ? Well, what do you think he believes in? You think maybe he doesn't have any beliefs. What he does is he's trying to figure out how he's going to manipulate us. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, I, 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 agree, I agree that belief systems are generally lies. Are well, lies. there's, there's you no know, way you can prove any yeah. of it. Yeah. And so it's based on faith. Faith is a very powerful tool. Okay, very powerful. It's just it's misused. And I don't think people have a clue uh, in the possibilities of directing it towards something that would meet your immediate, short-term, long-term goals, what you're looking for, like a girl hand to go home with tonight, whatever. You do have ESP. I see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Can't kid a kidder. I've been there and I've done that, and I, you know, we're all of us, you know, from laughing, dirty old men that need love. And, uh, uh, <laughs> and um, I think that what we all need is more discipline in our randomness and arbitrariness. And if you had some discipline in that, you could probably have a little more control on how your ship is sailing in this little sea you're in right now, which I will call horror on Elm Street. Because the, what I'm seeing right now is awful. How about you? You like what's going on? No. You want to hey, step out? You just raised my listing fees 400%. Well, I have to control my anger. How, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, with domestic violence down here, that's right in the ball game. And you know that's all learned, which means domestic violence is learned from their parents. It's not something you're born with, something you learn how to do. So you can unlearn it too. And that's what my brain spa is about. When things aren't working for you, 
You can go in for a change. Change, what do you want? And experiment, and you don't like it. Yes. Okay, so I have another question. Yes, ma'am. If you were going to, if you were going to nutshell, put in a nutshell. You mean the show something, game? Yeah, yeah something that, that people here could take home with them to increase their extra sensory perception. Oh, what we Would have you, is a sign-up sheet for anyone who wants to be contacted for a two-day event that we'll do on a weekend sometime where we'll just spend time talking about how the whole thing works and dealing with questions and taking you right down into that place and measuring you so that you can see how you can improve your ability in guessing if you want to be a better psychic. Is that what you wanted to hear from me, Asha? What I want to do is I'd like to encourage anybody here that wants to take a, a two-day workshop, give me your name and phone number so you can be contacted and we'll try to put something together. And it'll be cheap. I, I'm not interested in money. I'm interested in actually teaching you how to do this because that'll sell my book if it works, especially if you win a lottery. <laughs> I expect a royalty from that if I use my system and it works. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, what you I would like to do, though, is I'd like to take someone down like the great Randy, his million-dollar challenge. That's a bunch of horse shit. We could hypnotize him and improve his ability in guessing. How does he get out of that one? Who is this? Great Randy, the debunker. Yeah. It's mostly his horseshit. Yeah, There's, I yeah the skeptical inquirer and some of these people like Shermer are actually very, very good. And I read Shermer, I really like him. And um, because he's sensible. He's not biased. He's sensible. And Occam's razor is always the correct path in terms of the simplest explanation. And sometimes, oh, I can do that with stage magic or laser main doesn't mean that that's the baby in the bathwater. Yes, ma'am. So the scores on the test, how do we score ourselves? What's that? The scores on the test, the yeah, numbers? I, there's on my website, it is that thing. You can email me and I'll upload a slide to you. Okay. You can grade yourself. And the book should be out shortly anyway, so. There's an easy answer you can give us tonight. What? What do the numbers mean? Okay, what numbers did you guys get? Let me have some numbers. 105. What? 6. You had 105? Yeah. Study her. <laughs> yeah, you're studyable. Okay. Yeah, the higher your score, that's incredible. 105? Yeah. I'd like to study you. What? Uh, what? Yeah, yeah, well. No, I got it. I got it. Yeah, see, and what you want to do is that's your start point. And then what I'll do, if you take this mini course, what I'll do is we'll measure your ESP when you first come in. We'll do some card studies and do the statistics of how you do all of that. It's real simple. And then we'll teach you how to use the hypnosis. And then at the end of the two days, I'll measure your ESP again. We'll see where you are. That's straight up. It works. Most everybody that goes through this in a two-day period can increase their ability in guessing 400 times, which means if you fancy yourself as a psychic, I can fine-tune you. I can fine-tune you, big time. Big time enough that I could certify you for any kind of a networking thing you wanted to do where you had a rating in terms of how much of a psychic you are or not. It isn't illusionary and gossip and, and fan clubs. It comes down to I can measure it. And I can teach you how to improve it from where you are. OK, anybody wants samples? I'm going to be back there jashing them out. Thank you very much. Nice to be here again. Yeah, good. Nice to see all you guys. And uh, it's been hot. The last time I did this, it was cool. When did I do this last? September or something. I forget. OK, thank you. RVML Resource Center is a volunteer-operated federal 501c3 tax-exempt nonprofit organization. RVML is dedicated to providing easy access to a comprehensive collection of information on a variety of metaphysical, spiritual, and personal development subjects. RVML accepts and appreciates all donations. Material and monetary contributions are fully tax-deductible. This recording is not copyrighted and permission is granted to broadcast, exhibit, or duplicate all or part of this program for non-commercial educational purposes. This live presentation was organized and presented by the Rogue Valley Metaphysical Library and Event Center. For more information, please visit rvml.org.